In the vast tapestry of human existence, there exists a singular thread woven through the fabric of every society, every culture, and every individual, the relentless march of time. It is an undeniable truth, an unwavering companion on our journey through life. And for centuries, we've accepted it as an immutable force. But what if it doesn't have to be? As a futurist and a dedicated student of longevity, I stand at the precipice of a profound paradigm shift, one that challenges our very understanding of the human experience. For years, I've immersed myself in the science, the stories, and the possibilities that surround the enigma of aging. And I've arrived at a bold and compelling conviction. Aging is a disease. My third book, Caging Aging, is a call to arms for humanity to treat aging as a disease. Aging is like a dragon that silently consumes 100,000 people every day by causing age-related diseases. In this book, 100 of the world's leading longevity experts will share their insights on why it's time to cage this dragon, offering groundbreaking research, strategies, and solutions to extend both lifespan and health span. It's not just about living longer, it's about living better. While it may seem audacious to declare that which has been considered a fundamental aspect of life itself as a disease, I am not alone in this belief. Countless luminaries in the fields of longevity, gerontology, genetics, nutrition, and beyond have come to share this perspective. Their combined wisdom, experience, and relentless pursuit of knowledge are the cornerstone of this book. In the pages that follow, you will embark on an extraordinary journey. We will explore the scientific foundations of our assertion that aging is indeed a disease, a disease that can and must be slowed down, halted, and ultimately reversed. We will delve into the intricate mechanisms that underpin the aging process, revealing the vulnerabilities we've long accepted as fate. But more importantly, we will unveil the potential for transformation, the tantalizing prospect of a future where aging is not an inevitability, but a treatable condition. In these chapters, you will encounter the voices of 100 longevity experts, visionaries who have dedicated their lives to understanding the profound intricacies of aging. They will share their research, their insights, and their dreams for a world where time no longer dictates our destiny. This book is not just a collection of ideas. It is a manifesto for a future where the boundaries of human potential extend far beyond what we've ever imagined. It is a call to arms for scientists, policymakers, and dreamers alike to unite in the pursuit of one of the greatest challenges of our time, the conquest of aging. So join me on this transformative expedition as we unlock the mysteries of aging, challenge the status quo, and pave the way for a world where the sands of time flow in our favor. The journey is arduous, the terrain uncharted, but the destination, a future where aging is a conquerable foe, is a vision worth pursuing with unwavering determination. Welcome to the revolution. We hear it all the time, right? Aging, it's inevitable, you're only as young as you feel, that whole thing. But what if, and stick with me here, what if we've had it wrong the whole time? Like, what if aging isn't some unavoidable fact of life, but actually like a disease we can fight? And that's a thought-provoking way to start things off. Right. And that's exactly the kind of radical idea that Dr. Dana Marduk is diving into. Dr. Marduk, our futurist and doctorate of longevity. And they've got this new book coming out, Caging Aging. But before you go thinking this is just another one of those live to 100 books, it's so much more than that. It's way more ambitious, right? Oh, absolutely. Dr. Marduk's bringing together over 100 experts, all making the case that aging itself should be classified as a disease. Which really makes you stop and think, doesn't it? Yeah. We're so used to this idea of lifespan being, well, finite. This totally changes the conversation. 100%. And Dr. Marduk really lays it all out in the introduction of the book. It's called Why We Should Treat Aging as a Disease. 
And honestly, it's a bit of a mind bender. Like, think about how much time, money, energy we spend fighting cancer, heart disease, Alzheimer's. What if all those things have a common denominator, a root cause we could be tackling head on? It's a perspective shift, for sure. Mm. Instead of just adding years to life, what if we could add healthy years? Exactly. I mean, think about what that would mean for healthcare, for how we prioritize resources, even just how we understand the human experience. Huge implications. But this isn't just some philosophical debate, you know? Dr. Marduk gets into the nitty gritty of it all. They're exploring some seriously cutting edge research. We're talking chapters on rejuvenating the human body, the microbiome's influence on aging, even artificial intelligence in aging. See, now you're speaking my language. Those are some fascinating areas of research. Let's take that first one, rejuvenating the human body. This is where things get really exciting, I think. This chapter likely delves into things like senolytics. Senolytics? Yeah, they target these zombie cells that accumulate as we get older. Those cells, they contribute to so many age-related issues. Think of it like this. We, our bodies are intricate machines, right? Yeah. And these senescent cells are like parts that are malfunctioning, glitching out. Okay, I'm with you. Senolytics, they're like the cleanup crew. They come in, get rid of the junk help the system run smoother. Wow, that's kind of a perfect analogy. So, okay, then you've got the microbiome, which honestly blows my mind every time I learn something new about it. It's incredible, isn't it? All those tiny organisms living in our gut, and they have such a huge impact on our health, digestion, immunity, even our brains. And now research is showing more and more that the makeup of our gut bacteria, it can actually directly affect how we age. No way. So this chapter probably goes into how we can like hack our microbiome. Exactly. Think diet, lifestyle changes, even things like fecal transplants. Yeah. It's all about finding ways to encourage a healthy, diverse microbiome that can help slow down the aging process. Wow. Okay. And listen, I can't not ask about the AI angle. I yeah, mean, who, who isn't fascinated by artificial intelligence these days? What's the link to aging? Well, think about it. AI is amazing at analyzing massive amounts of data, way more than we humans can handle. And it can pick out patterns that we might completely miss. Okay, that makes sense. Now, imagine aiming that power at the aging process. We're talking about AI algorithms that could potentially predict how we age individually, spot the early signs of age-related diseases way before they become a problem, even personalize interventions to help us live longer, healthier lives. The possibilities are really pretty mind-blowing. And this is where things get really interesting. Dr. Marduk got some serious heavy hitters to weigh in, some of the biggest names in longevity research, people who are like pushing the boundaries of what we thought was possible. Like, uh, check this out, Dr. David Sinclair, the geneticist from Harvard. I know his work. He's got that famous quote, he says, aging is a software issue, not a hardware problem. Oh yeah, I love that one. It's like our bodies are more like computers than we realized, right? It's a great analogy. And it gets to the heart of what Dr. Sinclair's working on, it's the whole idea of epigenetics. Which is? So it's not just about the genes themselves, but how they're expressed and how it changes over time. It's like, imagine the hardware, your DNA, and the software, that's the epigenetics part, controlling how that hardware runs. Okay, so if we can kind of like rewrite that software. Exactly. We might be able to slow down aging, maybe even reverse some of those changes we thought were permanent. Wild. Okay, and then there's Dr. Jose Cordero, futurist, co-author on the book, and he just drops this bomb. He says, we should kill death before it kills us. Now, Dr. Cordero, he's known for his, shall we say, bold pronouncements. To put it mildly. But that quote, it kind of sums up the whole philosophy behind caging aging. You know, yeah. death isn't inevitable. It's a problem to be solved. I mean, it sounds crazy at first, but when you really think about it. It's a paradigm shift. Mm. And it speaks to how much things are changing in the longevity field. It's not just about living longer. It's about living better for longer. A hundred percent. Like Liz Parrish, the CEO of BioViva, says in the book, the future of medicine is not just about treating diseases, but about extending our health span. Couldn't agree more. She's doing incredible work with gene therapy, really challenging those assumptions that age-related decline is just a given. Yeah, and speaking of challenging assumptions, you ready for this? Dr. Aubrey de Grey. The regenerative medicine guru, what do you say? Hold on to your hats. He says, the first person to live to 1,000 might have already been born. See, I told you these guys are pushing boundaries. That's insane. Dr. de Grey, he's not messing around. He's got this whole thing called Strategies for Engineered Negligible Senescence, S S-E-N. S-E-S. Yeah, basically, he's identified seven types of damage that he believes cause aging. Things like cells dying off, mutations in our DNA, even that buildup of gunk in our cells. So he's trying to, like, 
reverse those. Exactly. His quote, I mean, it's provocative for sure, but it shows you just how much the field is changing. It's not just about slowing down aging anymore. It's about potentially turning back the clock. It's mind-blowing, really, to think that something that used to be pure science fiction, it could be within reach. But here's the thing. Caging aging, it's not just a book. It's a call to action, you know? Dr. Marduk wants people to read this and get fired up, get involved. They want people to join the conversation, to advocate for this new way of thinking about aging. And that's crucial, really. This isn't just about scientists tinkering away in labs. This is about all of us. Mm -hmm. We need to be having these conversations, grappling with the ethical, social, even economic implications of what it means to treat aging as a disease. It's a big deal. And the cool thing is Dr. Marduk's not just preaching to the choir here. They actually want everyone to get involved, contribute to the Caging Aging Project. Yeah, really? Yeah. They've got a whole section on their website where you can submit your thoughts, ideas, even just like questions you have. That's awesome. So it's not just a one-way street. Not at all. It's like a big, open conversation. Plus, you can sign up for updates, see how the whole movement's progressing. I like it. Kind of keeps everyone in the loop, right? Yeah. Makes it feel like we're all part of something important. Totally. And it is important. I mean, we're talking about potentially changing the entire world here. And Dr. Marduk actually says it in the book's intro that we're on the verge of this, like, massive revolution, one that really challenges, like, centuries of assumptions about what it means to be human. Centuries, yeah. That's a long time to hold on to an idea. Right. Think about it, aging. It's always been this constant, right? <laughs> this thing we just accept as inevitable. But um, what if it's not? It's kind of mind-blowing when you really let that sink in. Like, what if we really do have the power to, I don't know, break free from those limitations, redefine our relationship with, with time itself? It's both exciting, right, but also kind of daunting. No, absolutely. And that actually leads perfectly to this question Dr. Marduk leaves us with. Something for all of us to, like, really chew on. If we could conquer aging, if this whole movement takes off, how does that change how we see our lives, you know, right now, today? It makes you stop and think, doesn't it? If we're not racing against the clock in the same way, do our priorities change our goals? Even just, like, how much we appreciate each day, it's a Big question. Huge. No easy answers. But that's what makes these deep dives so fascinating, right? We don't have all the answers, but we're asking the right questions.